What is the perfect aspect ratio for YouTube Shorts? What resolution and frame rate should you use for Shorts? And how do you create YouTube Shorts in DaVinci Resolve? Keep watching to find out. Plus, I've got some bonus tips for you. Once you've created your DaVinci Resolve project, head over to the Media tab and then go and add some clips. I'm just using these clips from an X4. And if you get this message box, you can just click Don't Change for now. Now we need to create a timeline to edit our Shorts in. The quickest way to do this is to find a clip that you want to use right click on it come up here and choose new timeline using selected clips we'll give the timeline a name and now you want to uncheck this use project settings checkbox to get more options come over to the format section and now we want to change the resolution to be a youtube shorts compatible resolution so you can just type in values here but if you click this drop down you can choose this 1920 by 1080 this is not vertical video but you can tick this tick box here to turn it into a vertical video format this gives us the youtube short resolution of 1080 wide by 1920 high. What frame rate should you use for YouTube Shorts? Well, unlike some platforms, YouTube Shorts actually supports different frame rates. The best thing to do if all of your footage is the same frame rate is to choose the same frame rate here as your footage was shot in. For uploads, YouTube supports 24 frames a second up to 60 frames a second. If you're familiar with DaVinci Resolve Color Science, then you can choose your settings here. But if you don't know what any of this means, just leave the default faults as they are and hit create. Down here we've got our timeline short one and if we switch over to the edit page we've now got this vertical video timeline. We'll just make a bit more space for the timeline and hit shift Z to zoom everything onto the timeline. So YouTube shorts can be anywhere from 15 to 60 seconds long. If you want to you can hit control minus on the keyboard to zoom out and then move your playhead all the way over until you get to 60 seconds or one minute here. Hit M on the keyboard to add a marker. Hit M and then you can give this a name we're just going to call it maximum and if you want to choose a color you can let's choose orange and click done now we know that our footage can't go past this marker otherwise we're going to have a youtube short that is too long to make sure this marker doesn't move when we make edits come up to the timeline menu scroll down here and make sure this is not ticked this ripple timeline markers i'm just going to click that to un ticket. If this is unticked, when we make edits, this marker is always going to stay at 60 seconds. Come back up to the media pool and we'll go and choose some other clips. And now you can see this clip has gone over our 60 second marker. So we can just bring it back until it snaps into line with that 60 second marker. The next thing you're probably going to want to do is modify how the 16 by 9 footage is going to fit into this vertical format. Just going to close the media pool and we'll make some space here. And because I'm not using any of the audio from these clips, I'm going to right click on this audio one track choose delete track now we're just working with the video we can of course add our own music if we want to later click on one of the clips and then make sure that your inspector is open here and you can drag your mouse on the zoom controls double click any of these to reset and you can move the position left and right or up and down but a quicker way is to come down here and make sure this transform is turned on now you get these handles you can drag the video around and if you use one of these side handles, notice how it's actually stretching it, which is not what we want. So we'll reset everything by clicking this button here in the transform. If you hold down shift, then it will maintain the correct aspect ratio. It won't stretch anything weirdly. Let's have a look how that looks. Pretty good for this second clip. Make sure the clip is selected. We might just want to move this around just a little bit and maybe zoom in. This clip definitely needs a bit of work. But if I move the X position here, notice it's not moving. That's because we've still got this clip selected here. So I'm just going to hit Control Z to undo, click the clip, and then I actually want to show off some of this area. Change this. And I'm going to leave this clip as it is because I'm happy with it. The next thing we're going to do is grab some music. I've been using Epidemic Sound for over five years now. If you want a free trial and some free music and sound effects, check out the first link in the video description. So we'll just go and download a track. And as long as you've connected your YouTube channel to Epidemic Sound, then you can use this music without any copyright strikes, as long as you've got a subscription when you publish your video. We'll grab that music and we'll just drag it on top of Master here. And now we've got the music. We can drag it underneath the video. We're going to need to trim this so you can hit B on the keyboard to change to this blade tool. Position your mouse, click and that will cut. Hit A. We'll click this button here to go back to selection mode. Select the rest and delete it. Now we can close the media pool to make some more space. 
come back to this particular clip here where I've got me walking. I'm going to reset everything in the transform to go back to how it was. And instead you can use this smart reframe feature. If you leave it on auto, it will automatically try and decide what's in the frame. Click reframe and then it will try and work out what the subject is, in this case me. You can see how it's kept me in the center of the frame now without us having to manually change anything. If you want to test how your YouTube Shorts will act when it loops around, click this button here to enable looping and then hit space to play. When it gets to the end, it will automatically loop back to the start just so you can check how any music will loop. You can of course add text. We're going to click on effects and we'll just add some simple text by grabbing this text option and dragging it down on top. And let's just say Insta360 X4 Creative Shots. Use a font, change the size. We'll close the effects. Hit Shift Z to zoom to the entire timeline. And let's just add a little fade in and make that a bit shorter. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time here to get things looking how you want. If you're just getting started with DaVinci Resolve or you want a really handy reference guide, make sure you get my DaVinci Resolve field manual. I'll put a link in the description. In a minute, we'll look at exporting this video so we can upload it to YouTube. But first, I've got a couple of bonus tips for you. For each clip that you're using in your shorts, just think about what the focal point is and try and keep that somewhere towards the center. The reason for that is you're going to have some user interface elements when the YouTube short is playing back, so you don't want them covering up any important information or any interesting details. So in our timeline settings, we created a vertical video. YouTube Shorts actually supports square video or one-to-one -one video, so you can use that if you like, but you probably won't want to as they won't look like shorts and they'll have black bars to make up the missing space. And the third bonus tip I've got for you is try and capture the viewer's attention really quickly at the start of a short because attention spends. So in this case, this is not really very attention grabbing. All right, once you're happy with your video, you can come over to the Deliver workspace here scroll across and you should see this YouTube preset. Click on this drop down and we're going to use this 1080p preset. Make sure that this tick box is still ticked to use the vertical resolution. So we actually export a vertical video, choose a file name, click browse to choose a location, hit add to render queue and on the right hand side here, click render all to actually render your short. Once it's rendered, you can right click and choose open file location and then double click on your short to check how it looks. So we just exported a single short, but you can actually have multiple shorts in a single timeline if you want to really quickly cut up one long video into multiple shorts so you can upload more often. If you want to find out how to export multiple videos from a single timeline in Resolve, check out this video next where I go into exactly how you do that. Please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.